Okay, hello everyone. All right, so let's talk about relational operators. All right, so we know with our if statement, we start with the if clause, and then we type our condition. Now, the condition is basically a program statement. It has to result to either true or false. So in the last video, the exa an example we saw was two greater than three. Okay, so two greater than three is uh, it's a statement. Um, but it's our condition, we, you know, that follows our if statements. Now, this condition has to result to either true or false. Right after our condition, we have our colon, and then I'm going to hit enter. And then we type what, we basically write the code that should run if this condition is true. It could be one line of code, it could, it could be multiple lines of code. So I'm going to say that if 2 is greater than 3, if that is true, then let's print out a message saying that the statement, oops, the statement is true, right? It's very important that we indent, okay, the, the code or the lines of code that, that are going to execute when this condition is true. It's very important. The indentation over here marks the beginning, okay, of the code that should run when this condition is true. It's very important. And if you have multiple statements, more than one statement, so this is basically called a block, a block of code. It could be one or multiple lines. It's very important you indent it and, it and that it's not on the same line as the if statement. It shouldn't be something like this. It should be indented. The code that should run when the condition, this condition is true, should be indented one level. And any any statements that follow this um, th this code over here, the code that should run when the condition condi um, when this condition is true, any statement that follow this should all be in line with this. Should all be indented with this. So we want to print out a statement saying the statement is, tr is true. Let's also print out the statement saying that end of program, for example, end of program. So the if statement, what we've said is if two is greater than three. If this is true, then print out the statement is true and then print out end of program. If it's not true, nothing happens. We've only written an if statement, okay, for when this condition is true. That's how an if statement works. And remember the indentation over here is very important. Indent the, the code that you want to run when the condition is true and make sure they are all consistent if it's more than one line uh, of code. So when I run this, nothing happens because two is not greater than three. So this statement results to false. And when this results to false, your block of code won't run, right? So if I change this back to, let's say, 3 greater than 2, now we know the statement is true. 3 is greater than 2. And so we, ex we are expecting these two uh, statements to run. When I, when I run, okay, we can see that these two statements are, are being displayed. All right, so remember after the if clause, we type our condition. Now, this is what's called a Boolean expression. It's called a Boolean expression because it, it can result to either true or false. A Boolean expression is an expression that can result to, to either true or false. And we form or we create these Boolean expressions with relational operators like the greater than sign. So there are a bunch of relational operators that I want us to go through. So one of them is the greater than sign. And we've seen how it works, uh, how that works. It compares two numbers and see, see which one is big. If this is bigger than that, um, then you know basically this, the, the, this is true. And so the, the lines of code will run. Another conditional operator um, sorry, another relational operator is the less than sign, the opposite of this. So I'm going to change that changes to the less than sign. It's basically saying if three is less than two, then print out these statements. When I run the program, nothing happens because three is not less than two. So that's that's another relational operator. Another relational operator is the less than or equal to, right? Now this condition, it's it's together, right? No, don't put a space between them. As soon as you put a space between them, you've separated them. It's together. This is one operator. It's a less than or equal to um, relational operator. And what this is doing is, it's ch test. It's checking. It has basically two conditions, right? It's checking to see if three is either less than two or three is equal is is, is equal to two. So either it's less than two or or, or equal to two. So this this reads if 3 is less than or equal to 2, right? Well, we know 3 is not less than 2, so that's out. We also know that 3 is not equal to 2, so that's out. So we're not expecting these two statements to run. When I run the program, nothing happens. Let's change this to 2 less than or equal to 2. First of all, it's checking two things. It's checking to see if, if, if any of them is true, right? Out of these two things, less than or equal to, if any of them is true, this entire statement Okay, it's true. So it's checking, first of all, to see if 2 is either less than 2. We know that's not true. 2 is not less than 2. 
But guess what? 2 is equal to 2. So because at least one of them is true, this statement is true because 2 is equal to 2, right? It's th this, me this means less than or equal to 2. Is, is, is 2 less than or equal to 2, right? Is 2 less than 2 or is 2 equal to 2? Something like that. So when I run this, we can see the statement um, are, are displayed because two, one of these conditions is true. Two is equal to two. Even though it's not less than two, it's equal to two. The same thing goes for greater than sign, um, greater than or equal to. So I'm going to change this to greater than or equal to. All right, two is not greater than two, but it's equal to two. So this statement will run because uh, at least one of them is correct. At least one of these two conditions, okay, is correct. So when I run the program, we can see the statements are still displayed over here. All right, so let's change it to, let's say, 9, right? So it's asking if 9 is greater than or equal to 2. Well, 9 is not greater than, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. 9 is greater than greater than 2, right? So at least um, one of them is true. So this entire expression is true. 9 is not equal to 2, but we know 9 is greater than 2. So it's asking if 9 is greater than or equal to 2, then print these statements. Because 9 is greater than 2, um, even though it's not equal to 2, we print out these statements. All right, we check for something like this. When I run the program, nothing happens because one is not is is, is neither greater than um, two, okay, or um, or equal to two, right? One is not greater than two. One is not equal to two. So none none of these conditions are true. So the statement doesn't run. Remember, the if statement only works if this boolean expression that we form with, uh, with relational operators results to true, okay. It, it, the, uh, the if statement works only if this boolean expression here results to true. All right, so we've seen four of them so far. Another one is what's called the equality operator, right? So I'm going to use two double equals, like two equal signs. <laughs> Sorry, I said two double equal signs. So two equal signs. Now, when I we've seen only one equal sign. For example, when we are declaring de declaring our variable, I'm just going to go down here. Um, we create a variable, let's say number, and then we assign it a value of let's say two. We've seen one equal sign in action. Now when you when you use one equal sign, you're actually assigning this number, okay, to this variable. We are storing two into the variable number. When you when you use one equal sign. But when you use two equal signs, you're comparing, you're asking, is what's on the left equal to what's on the right? It's a question. And that's why this is a Boolean expression because it results to either true or false. We're asking, is one equal to two, true or false? Okay? Or yes or no, true or false. One is not equal to two, so this statement will run because we're asking if one is equal to two, then display this message. When I run, nothing happens because one is not equal to two. But when I change this to two is equal to two, we're asking if two is equal to two. That's true. Two is equal to is equal to two. So when I run this program, we're expecting to see the program statement. Now, do, do not change this to one equal sign because again. When you try to use one equal sign, we are assigning, we are putting one number or one value in a variable or in another. Or we are putting what's on the right to, into what's on the left. But when you use two equal signs, you are asking a question. You are comparing and saying it's what's on the right equal to what's on the left. All right, so when I run this, we can see the statement. All right, the last relational operator we're going to talk about today is the not equal to operator. So we use the exclamation sign to represent not. So this reads, again, the, these are together, so don't do not separate them because once you do that, you, you've 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 split them up and it wouldn't work properly. So this reads not equal to the exclamation sign reads not equal to. So we are asking if two is not equal to two. It's it's like asking is two is two not equal to two, right? Is two not equal to two? Or, or you can say if two is not equal to two, right? Then this let, let's display a message. But we know two is equal to two, so this, um, so so basically, what we're asking is, if two is not equal to two, then we we, display, we are displaying this message, right? If this what's on the left is not equal to what's on the right, then display this message. But guess what? Two is equal to two, so it wouldn't work. Two is equal to two, so it wouldn't work. When I run this statement, when I run this program, these statements are not printed because two is actually equal to two. This will only result to true, true, okay? <laughs> this will only result to true if two or, or if, if what's on the left is what it's not equal to what's on the right. So let me change this to, let's say, six. Now we are asking, is what's on the left not equal to what's on the right? 
It's true because what's on the left over here is not equal to what's on the right. Right? That's what we're asking. Is what's on the left not equal to what's on the right? Okay? It's true because 6 is not equal to 2. So in, in that case, this entire, st entire statement is true. It's true because 6 is not equal to 2. So when I, because this entire statement is true, because we know that with an if statement, if this Boolean expression here results to true, then what's in the block of code um, over here executes. So when I run this, we see the statement. Again, let me change this to, let's say, 5 and 5. We are asking, if 5 is not equal to 5, then print out the statement. But here's the case, 5 is actually equal to 5. So this was results to false. If we had something like 8 not equal to 5, right, then it will work because we're asking over a question over here. If 8 is not equal to 5, print this, right? And it's true, 8 is not equal to 5. So we are going to print this. When I run the program, we see the statement, right? So this can be a bit confusing to, you know, get, get your head about. Uh, around, but you get you get used to it very fast. So think about it, play with numbers, play with values, and see if you can uh, um, get a clearer or a better sense um, out of it. All right? Try numbers. Try the same numbers. Try um, different numbers, and try to see if you can make sense out of it that, that way. All right? So we are asking a question: If eight is not equal to five, then print this. The only time this will be printed is if eight is not equal to five, and it's true. Eight is not equal to five, so print this. Right? If I change this to five, you're asking if five is not equal to five. The only time these get print these gets printed is if five is not equal to five. Right? But actually five here is equal to five. So this is false. The only time again these gets print gets printed is when five or what's on the left is not equal to what's on the right. Here's the case, what's on the left is actually equal to what's on the right. So this is also false. And when I run the program, we don't see the statements. So th this is um an idea of a relational operators. Now we were going to use these relational operators to form our Boolean expressions. Okay, so we use uh, these relational operators to form our Boolean expressions, and that's how, why it's important to understand them. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will see examples of re relational operators. So if it's not clear, don't worry. We'll see more examples. But um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye-bye.